Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fader. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer. And what's happening with my head today? Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, this is the weekly astrological message for the week between the 19th and the 26th of August 2017. This is the peak hour all astrologers have been talking about through this year. This week is a pivotal point of change. This is the watershed uh, uh, this is the crossing point. This is the, this is the gateway. Gateway to what? Well, we have the solar eclipse, of course, coming on August 21st on the 28th, 53 minutes degree of Leo on the Leo Aquarius axis. And if you have any planets nearing those degrees in Leo and Aquarius or, of course, squaring it in Taurus or... Uh, or Scorpio then you'll be more affected by this solar eclipse the solar eclipse is happening while Mars again remember like the last eclipse the last lunar eclipse on August 7 Mars is playing a part here as well it's on the eclipse it's conjunct the moon on the 20th and the 20th on the 20, 21st this is a time to walk forward everything is talking about change everything is talking about walking the new way, getting some new independence, taking a hands-on uh, approach towards changing our lives, both privately and collectively on this planet. Mars is all about initiative. It's all about understanding that our future is in our own hands. It's about leadership. And when Mars is conjunct that eclipse, on the Leo Aquarius axis, our role for humanity, our role for the group, our higher essence, utilizing our egos and our passion and our higher mind as well, rising above the, the personal needs into the collective needs without canceling myself out, but with a feeling of empowering myself and the empowerment of others. So <clears throat> we, have, uh, we have this cardinal planet going into that eclipse. And of course, we have a cardinal cross as well, a grand cross in the sky, a cardinal grand cross in the sky with Pluto in Capricorn, Uranus in Aries, Venus in Cancer, and Jupiter in Libra. This is all about change. This is all about going towards that new point. This is all about believing that our own role, that the fact that we live here on this planet can change something, can change something for us and can change something for the collective. How do things change in this world if not by our own hands, we, the public, us, the people? We are all minute lights, but together we are blinding. Together we are as bright as the sun and our own choices our own little choices during the day, <clears throat> the points that make up that day, and the days that make up our years, and the years that make up our lives. These are the agents of change. These are the magical elements that can create a better world. Whether we separate our garbage, organic and non-organic, do we recycle, do we eat and, and buy, products from animals do we care if for fair trade do we use palm oil do we use harsh chemicals do we prefer public transportation to driving our own car there are many little choices that we ourselves can make to practically make this a better world today because of who we choose to be and there's so many things in the sky talking about that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I know there's many people full of anxiety and fear out there because of that eclipse, because of all the change, because of the Trump administration, because of wars and, and conflicts. Well, if you are full of fear and if that fear paralyzes you, then darkness already won. But if that anxiety and that fear pushes you 
into realization that it is in your own hands, that your future can be shaped by you yourself into a hands-on approach that pushes you into action then light then sunrise are already here then the sunrise is, is already blooming over the horizon because the new light is coming in the new consciousness the new understanding is coming in and as hard and troublesome as the next few months or year are going to be the change towards the world, road to positivity has already begun and there's many realizations about responsibility coming in we can see a uh, the sun going into Virgo on the 22nd. Happy birthday, all you Virgos. I love you. <laughs> and Virgo is all about looking at the small details. It's all about understanding that we are part of a chain. That if I'm a baker, if I'm a baker and I want to make the best bread, but the dough coming in, or I'm sorry, the flour coming in to make the dough is full of pesticides because the farmer was non-organic it doesn't matter how well I'm gonna bake my bread it's still gonna be poisonous so the Virgo understands that we are all part of a chain and if one link is polluted if one link is not in a high enough quality it affects the whole chain Virgo is all about healing and taking responsibility. It's all about giving service, being a custodian towards other people and this world, nature. So we're going to have that heightened energy uh, coming in on the 22nd. On the 23rd, we have the moon in Virgo, square Saturn, opposing Chiron, a very sensitive day. Lower your criticism on that day, both towards yourself and towards others. Be more encompassing, holistic, softer, and more tolerant both towards yourself and towards other people in your life all through this week we have Venus approaching towards a square with Uranus so <clears throat> usually when that happens we see a lot of people moving away from relationships breaking up we see also a lot of people moving away from their previous jobs and losing their or or losing their jobs but during this time we have a much shorter temper we have a, a much shorter fuse and we want to move ahead. And we have to watch that energy. We have to know it's there and then we can better utilize it because Uranus square Venus is all about change in the Venusian aspects. It's all about bringing more satisfaction into our life in a new way. So when that happens, we can try and focus our change within our relationships bringing a new, a new breeze into present relationships or a present job, making that a non-conflictual, a non-opposition, and a, a, you know, not something that is um, aggressive, but something that is more tolerant and accepting. And with that square, it's going to be hard, but it is possible. So try and make the change happen within your environment and not looking outside for something new. On the other hand, we can see people who are celibate uh, finding partners. We can see people who are jobless finding a new job. Uh, on the 25th, we have Saturn turning direct after a few months being in retrograde. So everything concerning taking responsibility, concerning maturing up, growing up, and actually understanding if what we believe in, Saturn in uh, Sagittarius, holds water if it's true if it works on the ground of reality or we should take responsibility and maybe even change the system how can we put so much power in the hands of people that we wouldn't even trust to look after our child to babysit our child would you let Donald Trump or Kim Jong-un or Kim Jong-il I don't even remember his name or Benjamin Netanyahu for that sake be a babysitter to your child would you trust him to take care of his or her needs I'm not sure you would and if you don't trust them to take care of one child 
how can they be in so much power that they can bring a holocaust a destruction unparalleled to the planet we live in and I'm t <laughs> I said lived in can you imagine lived in or lived on we still live in this planet we still live on this planet and this planet is not lost global warming is not a lost cause uh, the, the extinction in nature is not a lost cause rising ocean is not a lost cause the search for peace is not a lost cause Animal rights is not a lost cause. Human rights is not a lost cause. Ending hunger is not a lost cause. It is time that we take responsibility for the world we want to create. And again, I'm saying that beautiful saying by Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you want to see in this world. So when Saturn turns direct, all these processes of us taking our role in front of the public work more smoothly and this turning direct on the 21st degree of Sagittarius happens exactly on the south node the dragon's tail and the natal moon of Donald Trump so we can see karma catching up to him we can see him under a lot of stress we can see Bannon resigning this week we can see the conflict with Korea, we can see all these accusations with Russia, we can see the chaos, and of course the eclipse happening more or less on his horizon and Mars. We now have a new time for Donald Trump that is an hour early, and if that is the case, it's not exactly on his ascendant in Mars. It's not exactly, I'm sorry, on his ascendant. So this eclipse might not be as powerful for him, but with this Saturn turning direct on his south node, most probably would be under the biggest stress of his administration and he might be even pushed to resign or things can come up from the past that that uh, show uh, that bring up mo more information that is uncomfortable for Donald Trump but this can only this can also be that things suddenly become easier for him as this Saturn turns direct but however this is the less probable outcome but it is a possibility. And then, ah, also on the, 25th, on the 25th, not only Saturn turning direct, we have the moon conjunct Jupiter in Libra. Go out, have fun, see people, drink something, eat something, enjoy life. And on the 25th as well, we have that Venus entering Leo a little later on. And Venus in Leo is a great, great time, my friends. It's a time to enjoy life and to celebrate it and to take part within that celebration we call joie de vivre, the joy of life. Leo is all about taking a happy part in life. And Venus is all about satisfaction through love, relationships, money, food, drink, whatever. When Venus is in Leo, she's happy and we're happy and we can heighten our satisfaction. We can enjoy and play with life more. And of course, Leo is also about the understanding that there is something unique that we can provide to this world because we are living in it. We can make this world, we, or I can make this world, Leo, a better place, a more harmonious and beautiful place, Venus. And with those, uh, with those optimistic words, I want to finish this week. <clears throat> And, and wish that it would be an empowering eclipse for you, that you would take some time to resonate about the future and your, ro your role in the world. And I've put something on my Facebook page with a beautiful meditation music by Tina Turner that you can all uh, look into and listen to while you're meditating. And some words by my teacher, Maurice Fernandez, which I found empowering and beautiful towards the eclipse. So you can look for it on my page, Profile Astrology, on Facebook. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for everything you are doing. I want to thank you for not giving up. I want to thank you for being a small light that shines bright for many, many others in your life. And I encourage you to shine brighter. It would only make you a more fulfilled, happier person. Whenever somebody tells me 
that they are doing something purely from an altruistic uh, um, need, I don't believe them. I think that they're either dumb or lying. Because I know that whenever you do something good for other people, the gratification or the highest gratification comes to you. You feel so much better about yourself. You feel so much happier. You feel so much more content by doing good to others and to this world. So it's purely egotistical. If we do good, we become happier people. So do good and become happier. And thank you for listening. And of course, for private lessons, courses, lectures, whatever you need, contact me. I'm Boaz Feiler and I'm signing out. Have a beautiful eclipse. Bye-bye.